Almost a century ago, immigrant workers settled near the smokestack industries along the east side of Toledo's Maumee River. They were Hungarians, Slovaks, Italians, and Moravians. They built a neighborhood that worked and called it Birmingham. Much of that industry is gone now, and Birmingham, as a multicultural, multiracial community, is fighting for its life. Since 1974, the neighborhood has celebrated its battles and its victories with an annual ethnic festival on the streets of Birmingham. Father Hernani, uh, what do you think of as the major challenge to the community? Well, the major challenge of life is to survive. And I think that's the challenge we accepted by trying to plan for the future. Very often, especially in the history of American neighborhoods, it's things like this line right here that kill neighborhoods. This is a highway which destroyed neighborhoods all over America when they brought highways through neighborhoods. There was a proposed extension of a highway right down this street in front of the office, right through the heart of the Birmingham neighborhood. The people that related to the neighborhood saw clearly the danger that this represented and stopped the trucks and, and created a political movement in this neighborhood that said, this far and no farther, that said, we will not accept the concept that a road planner decides whether a neighborhood lives, lives or dies. It was not for the neighborhood people or the children in school. It was for the truckers, for industry. Uh, it was a four, to be a four-lane overpass, not a two-lane. And as a result, the four lanes would have annihilated our neighborhood. It would have cut a swath through on Consol Street that would have, in effect, been the beginning of the end for us. First, we had a load limit put on Consol Street. The police didn't uh, acknowledge that, didn't enforce it. The two signs were at either end, but nobody enforced it. My son had a walkie-talkie, and one of us would get there on the corner front and console. We seen the trucks coming in, and the ladies and the children was on the sidewalk. Mr. Kinsey and myself was very instrumental in that. And as they were coming, would, I would notify them that here they come, and as soon as they turned the corner, and they blocked the street. And then we flagged the truck down. Then immediately somebody with their car got behind the last truck, the truck went back up. Finally, we joined forces and physically stopped them. The women and children held hands and stopped the truckers. Just walked across the street and stopped them. Started out with about 20, 30 of us, but I would say it was pretty close to 250 people here before it was all over. Everybody from the neighborhood came out. <laughs> and of course they were surprised, and, but at, they learned a the lesson. They learned uh, we meant business on Consol Street. I had worked um, at, at some length uh, trying to make the overpass become a reality, and so we finally got what we refer to as state issue one monies in order to build the overpass. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, everybody says, "Stop! We don't want it anymore. If you're going to have trucks on it, well." 
you know, I think in this particular case, while we don't have the overpass, uh, we do have a neighborhood that wouldn't exist today had we allowed that to, to con continue forward. But it was a tough pill for me to swallow after having worked so hard to, to get the overpass. What made you change your decision, though? Well, I, I, oh, you mean change my decision about, about going ahead with it? Yes. Well, basically, I thought that Father Hernati was right. He, he was absolutely right. This was the first time, I understand, in the history of Toledo that an existing plan was changed by people. I just couldn't see that they would destroy something which is precious to us. You've used the word they many times. Who are they? Downtown and we, okay? <laughs> The East Toledo Community Organization was formed after that initial battle in Birmingham. Uh, stopped the trucks and stopped the road. Um, there was an effort to organize beyond that issue on other issues of concern in Birmingham, which spread to the whole East Toledo community. Is there anything left of that enthusiasm? It's always here. It isn't show till a crisis comes. It has to be some kind of a crisis. In other words, you get another hundred trucks down here tomorrow, you'll see the same thing again. I'm, I'd guarantee that within, within an hour. The word of mouth gets around fast, and they'd all be here again. If them trucks came barreling through here again, and it would be another police matter, because uh, we don't want that in our neighborhood no more. We're too used to just now to have it peaceful. <laughs> I've watched the Birmingham neighborhood grow and develop and change uh, over two decades now, and I uh, think probably the most important uh, development uh, that I've seen is the self-consciousness on the part of the people who live in that community uh, about their own desire to have a better future. I like this ethnic atmosphere. It's good, good neighborhood. The roots are here. Maybe the people stay here, but the roots are here because it keeps bringing back the people. Do you live in Birmingham? Yes, well, my mom lives here too. I used to live here a while back, but I, it brings me back, and I'm not Hungarian. I lived in New York, and the hustle and the bustle and the crowds and the noise and the, the carryings on, you don't find over here. I crossed the bridge, I was just like, whew. I'm glad to be back over here. <laughs> I found when I started uh, coming into the neighborhood how close everybody was and how uh, aware of their heritage they were and their ethnic background and um, the tightness of the family and everything that they did together. They hung around with everybody, and they still hang around with everybody. They're related to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> They're related true. to everybody. These people like you right from the start. Or they don't like you right or from the start. Or they don't like you right from the start. Yeah, that's true. They like I mean, they're, make it with them. they're, they're you know. They're going to accept you in, or they're going to. My first Christmas, when I came here, his father met me at the door and thanked me for dating his son. I thought, <laughs> hey, 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 no, wait a minute. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> this guy told you that last night. Now, Gary's got something money can't buy. <laughs> 
this neighborhood has something very unique to offer. I came, I originally grew up in the West End. There is, there is no cohesiveness that I see there that compared to what's here. And I have become Hungarian because I've lived here. And it's something that I am very thrilled with and I'm thrilled that my children are able to be in a community in which they have all types of people that they need to associate with. Hey, here's some abouts on the take it down to the guys there. Pass it down. We felt slighted here. Hey, hey. Well, bring Come some on. more bread. You know, the, the Birmingham hey. residents get first Bring day some more. Hey. Those of you who left hey. the neighborhood already. Take it down, Joey. Yeah. Head up, boy. Pass All it right. down. Ez a legjobb város, ahol van a Bezzetén Kiszországban, igazán. Volt a... I was all over this country. I'll take the lead of number one. Takes you five minutes to come in, two minutes to get out. So why in this neighborhood? Huh? Why? Yeah. Right above your I head. I think it's the best town in the country. <laughs> really? Toledo's wonderful. A lot of Hungarians live in here. <laughs> Keep up the custom, the Hungarian custom, and I believe in that a hundred percent. But is that being an American? Yes. Why? Because Hungarian American. They were Hungarian, and they applied to be American citizens. They bore us, us as kids today. Yes. We're all citizens. In fact, the Hungarians even. I lost two brothers in World War II. What are you talking about? Okay. They wanted to be Hungarian American. That's why they come to America. They built this country. No, on your zeggy. Okay? That's it. But, but what? Of course, we received our resources and our heritage from the old country. But we, we built a new one. We formed the whole ethnic spirit according to our mentality. So we are American ethnics. We are American Hungarians. Okay, thank you very much. Imre, Baba, uh, were both of you born in the United States? I was. Baba was born in Budapest in Hungary. How would you define yourselves? Very clearly, at this point, for me, American Hungarian. American. Clearly Hungarian. American. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So American, Hungarian, Hungarian, American? Yes. <laughs> very conscious, very proud of, um, very supportive of our roots, um, doing our best to share our traditions, our language, our background with our children. <laughs>
part of our challenge is, let's see, as you say, to to slow the process of, of people forgetting, of people becoming distant from their roots, from their, their backgrounds. When did you begin this dance group? We began the dance group, oh, it's, well, I think it's four Three. years now. Three. Does anybody Three know? Years. Three years. Three. I think it's four, it'll be four years in May. Yeah. It has to be because Shadow will be four next month, yeah. Four years in May. Why do you come to dance? It's fun. It's fun, yeah. You see new places, new things. Once the older ones are gone, there's not going to be anybody else to go on. So we might as well learn it so we can keep it going and pass it on to our kids. And Why is that important? It's our heritage. We're proud of it. Proud of it. Why? Why? <laughs> we're, I don't know. <laughs> We don't need a reason to be proud of it, we're proud. <laughs> Every one of these items were brought back from Czechoslovakia at one time or another. And uh, I'm proud of them because it's part of our heritage. find myself? Well, it's hard to say. Probably ethnic American, Moravian American, those are about the same, aren't they? You think you can be loyal to two things at the same time? Oh, I do. I will always like our music. I will always like our dances. I will always like our language. There isn't I'll, all, all these things, these beautiful things that you see, I'll always like them. I would like to welcome all of you to St. Stephen's Church on this special night where we celebrate the traditional Hungarian Christmas. About 100 years ago, some people brought this here. They came here with their faith, with empty pockets but full of hearts. And uh, tonight is a proof that the second, third generation kept the faith. <laughs> what role do you play? Second pastor. Master uh, pastor. Second pastor. I'm the uh, third pastor. Let's have a little practice. <laughs> <laughs> No, a little bit. I, I can pick out some words. What do, you, what do you think you were saying? Um, I'm giving a greeting to Jesus, uh, and I'm offering him some presents and saying, uh, glad, glad you're here. I'm speaking to him because he, he comes in and out of the fields and he's... Remember your line? Yes. All the execution. Had very big effect. Since I have it. Edes Jesus, Tan. Eljöttem te hozzád. Hoztam neked aranyat, törmét és mérhát. Kívánok mindenkinek boldog karácsony. At this time, I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas on behalf of all of us here. The old timers are all gone. Look, half of them don't even know how to speak Hungarian or don't even understand Hungarian. And when you don't speak it, read it, write it, understand it, fluently forget it. First the language goes, then people disperse, the traditions are gradually put aside. 
it's too bad that part of becoming American in the past meant losing your initial language because we lost a lot of, um, we lost a real national resource there. Birmingham and the ethnicity that occurs in Birmingham, the culture that occurs in Birmingham, is different from what's in Hungary or what's in Slovakia or what's in Italy. It is uniquely American. I think it's an American ethnicity and it changes and it grows here. And for that to be able to grow and to nurture, you need a physical setting for it as well. The churches, the fraternal organizations, the bars, the, the stores, the places that, that people touch physically, that helps them to sort of register what, what they're all about are very, very important to all of it. Like you say, there used to be a bar on every corner. In Monarchy, so that was like a second home. You know, everybody. You guys were all born in the neighborhood, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been, you know, hanging together in a sense as friends and even all each other, all life. Life. kids? Why? I don't know. When you find good people, I guess you just stick together. We're all Hungarians and stick together. We play ball together, softball, basketball. We do everything together. We, we do over. everything together. We go out New Year's Eve, wife, <laughs> girlfriends, <laughs> Christmas, know, whatever. The what about Monica? Well, that seems to have been a place that's that probably sort of been all together. Hang out for everyone. That's what kept us all together, probably. It was, it was a place where we get cheap beers and um, we didn't have lunch. to worry about yeah, free lunch. Free lunch monkeys on Saturday. Used to, monkeys used to lay out <laughs> sandwiches and didn't take us young guys long to figure out that you can go in there and have a beer for for twenty five cents and a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time we were just getting home at lunchtime, see, so we just stop yeah, in and there. keep right on going. What's happening to monks now? There is no monks now. He's Why? Uh, closing the doors. Yeah. There used to be more places, all right? The Palladium yeah. closed, then they closed. Well, Monk's still open, but, uh, you know, our, our kids probably will never have friends uh, for as long as uh, we've, we've shared. Together. This is probably dying. What we're, what we're doing now is probably dying. There used to be an A&P in this neighborhood. It's gone. It's now a residential building. There used to be five small sh corner shops. There are now three. And one of them is partly a gas station, and one of them is, you know, so they're carryouts now. But as a place to work, live, shop, and worship, we're having difficulties. Without the jobs, an important part of the glue of the community of Birmingham is lost. Birmingham right now is probably on its fourth generation, or coming into its fourth generation of, of industry and of jobs. The first generation was iron, then from iron to steel, second generation, then from steel to other manufacturing and large-scale agriculture. And now I believe with the failure of that third generation and the clearing of the industrial area in, in Birmingham, we are poised on the edge of what could be either the death of the neighborhood or the beginning of the birth of the fourth generation of jobs and industry in Birmingham. There's no factories around here anywhere like there used to be. Like we had the United U.S. Malibu right on Front Street, a big complex. Knocked that down, they moved to Cleveland. There's the shipyard, always work, dead's down. The inner lake, they just tore it all down. They just finished cleaning up the big furnace there. Next door neighbor, the Gulf Refinery. It's all nothing but level ground. All that big refinery thing. You go down for the unit gas foundry. That's all down, no good. Pure oil is completely down. It's gone, it's gone. What are you gonna do? Well, the way I look at it is everything was deteriorated. They skimmed the cream off the top and they never put a penny back in. That was the whole downfall right there. Do you think that happened in the other industries, Interlake and others along yes, the Yes, sure, the whole works. You could all the way from Millard Avenue down. You could see it right to this day. I asked him, what kind of concessions do you want to keep us working? And he told me, he said, we don't want any concessions. It's closed. We don't even want to talk concessions. I said, regardless of what we'd give you, he said, no, it's closed, that's it, we're through talking. And that was it, and they left. 
What will happen to Birmingham if jobs don't come back to the riverfront? Well, it's the same thing's going to happen. No way I look at it, like Ironville. If you own Ironville, all right, it's going downhill right now. So you can see it yourself, can't you? You can see it. As we passed the railroad tracks, we began to come into what used to be the Ironville neighborhood. Ironville, up until 30 years ago, had homes and churches, businesses, schools, very much like Birmingham. But in the 60s, it was torn down as an urban renewal project in efforts of drawing additional industry to Toledo. People in Birmingham neighborhood have never forgotten what has happened to Ironville, and they've sworn that they will not let it happen to their own community. Many corporations around the world uh, feel that it is to their advantage to locate abroad uh, rather than in this country. And we are fighting a battle in this nation to ensure that our automotive industry, our machine tool industry, our steel industry, our footwear industry, our shipbuilding industry, the list just goes on and on and on, uh, will still remain on American soil. This is a national battle. This is a battle Birmingham could never win alone. Eventually, with industrialization, will, because of the waterfront oh, and the common. access to the seaway and all that, I believe this neighborhood is doomed. Residential. It's going to happen. It's going. You're not going to see. You I'm not going to see. He's not going. But it's going to be that way. It's going to be all bulldozed down like Ironville. Look at Ironville. Who is responsible, or who would be responsible for? Uh, the bulldozing of uh, uh, Ironville. I mean, we had no idea. I mean, that, that was a, that was a viable community, and it, and it went. And, and, and there was no there was no uh, responsibility. It's or, still a waste because everything that was they tore down. There's nothing there now. Anyway. And that was a, that was a separate still community nothing beyond. Uh, how we had nice fights with those kids. <laughs> but uh, you know, the other question you know that you didn't ask us was um, who would benefit if uh, Birmingham did continue. Do you guys think it's worthwhile to fight for the neighborhood? Yeah. But if we're doing all we can, I don't know. How? I don't know. I don't know what you're fighting for anymore. It's like I said, you know, what was there in the past doesn't seem to be there now. The old ones are dying out. The young, the younger people are moving out. What is a neighborhood? Is it neighborhood people? Is it neighborhood houses? What are you fighting for? What do you think what the are you neighborhood trying is? for? Neighborhood I think, people. I think it's people. I think it's the community. That's what's kept us. I think that's what a neighborhood is. And you have a, you're a part of a big family. Yeah. There are lots of Selassies all over the place. They've been, they helped to build this neighborhood in many ways, some of these Selassies. Where are they are all? Any of them left in the neighborhood? Your sister. My sister. Just moved. In the neighborhood. That's it. Everyone else Everybody's gone. gone. Everybody's gone. Why did I say? Because I bought into the neighborhood and this became my home. And I do everything possible because this is my home. You still have to have a turf. Whenever you want to translate the spiritual, the spiritual boundaries to someplace else, it doesn't work. When people pick up their stakes and this is, they will, we will continue someplace else, that doesn't work. I don't know what Birmingham is anymore. You come back and you see the houses and you say someone who used to live there and you see the person going in the door who's living there now and you don't know who they are. No. After all you said about the community, how important it is, who, if not the next generation of younger people like you, are going to make the difference? Besides it's, being Hungarian, that's right, yeah. we were given the, the American dream. Who gave you the American dream? <clears throat> huh? you know. Who gave you the American The second generation who, who, who were embarrassed, uh, I think, at times to be Hungarian, who, who learned uh, diligently to speak English because they, they didn't want to have to speak Hungarian. What's it mean to you? What, what are you? What's the dream? I don't know. Nice home, nice family, nice home. comfort, <laughs> better, than, better than what your parents did and better for your children. And you, think you can't, on. and you think you can't get that in this neighborhood anymore? I don't think so. My father keeps talking about how his father walked out of some godforsaken village in Austria-Hungary with no idea in hell where he was going, but just the clothes on his back and wound up living in some place in Toledo, Ohio, just for a better life. You know, so if he's got that kind of balls to do something like that, why should we be committed to where we are? If we see something somewhere away from here, something better for ourselves, for our families, why should we be committed just 
just for tradition? Well, I think it should. I personally think it should be kept traditional, but I personally will not be here to live in it. I'll support it. I'll come to its functions, but I personally will not live in it because it's too. It's too close. If you live here, you live with your family. Because I know where my uncle Joe lives. His son lives here. His daughter lives here, and his other son lives here. I mean. And we had lived here. We wanted to just more or less expand our own horizons. How many kids? people here still live in the neighborhood? Oh, my family still lives here. No, but here actually lives here. My house you guys is for live sale, here? No <laughs> for sale. <laughs> you want to buy a house? I <laughs> house. Right. 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 Give him a phone number, Buck. Give him a phone number and an address. What happened to all these people that live in Birmingham and moved out of here? Why the hell don't they move back here? Well, you know he was why? born. He was born and raised here. Yeah, I was still born and raised here. I won't move out of here. Yeah. Here when they were There's no turn. Yeah, been been here. Here. The houses are too close. You know, I mean, they're, they're just too close. We want like five acres, trees, no neighbors. But you haven't got five acres. You haven't got five acres. Across the street, you know. All of you guys visit. love Birmingham to visit, but you you. You want to get away from No, I think, we, I think we love Birmingham yeah, when we started here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? I love Birmingham. No, you know, it's good. My own house. People grow. They grow the and people. expand and, and uh, Everybody suburbia. gets a couple bucks goes out there. Hey, I, I can go out there. I, I prefer to stay here. Here it is. Wait. Well, Metal bomb. I, I, I can go out there. I don't have to have a mortgage on my house. Sam Lanky, we could come here for a $20,000 a year, but you know there's still his problem. I don't care if they're taping this thing, Birmingham as a sparkling, you know, community, but there's still problems here. I mean, my, my nieces and nephews live right over here on Valentine. Their plants are missing, their chair. I mean, there's, no. there, you know, this isn't the, uh, no, this is the white neck. We live right near an open area of Oregon where people can obtain new housing and, and, and larger pieces of land. Um, so many would see that as a step to better themselves. So I, part, I guess it's change of scenery, um, status, the suburban environment. What do you think threatens the neighborhood most? The greatest fear is if um, the absent, land, absent landlords, those are the greatest detriment to any neighborhood. Uh, in my books, they are bad people. They milk the property, they milk the neighborhood. They don't have any conscience. They can destroy anything, and uh, they pick up their money and leave. We have 1,351 houses in our boundary line in Birmingham. In the last two years, there was 113 houses that had some form of work done to it. It was either decided to make it more attractive, it was either painted, uh, they've had new windows put in, front porches redone, a lot of little things. And we as, as diehard Birmingham, diehard Eastsiders, have got to just try to keep educating. And if you get your neighbor mad at you because you're complaining about it, the hell with them. They either come our way or let him get out. And that's the way I feel about it. You have to have affordable loans in order for the people to renovate. That's good. You know, if a yeah. guy's unemployed and his eavesdrop is falling off and he needs storm when he's replaced, where's the priority? putting bread on the table, yeah. paying the gas bill, or renovating the house. The big challenge is if you can make young people interested to take the homes. I always have one example in my mind, St. Louis, the Italian hills. Uh, people became so conscious and so determined to keep up the place, the turf, what I'm talking about, that they are almost in a line if a house is open. Would anything bring any of you back here? Oh. Boy, boy, boy. You big wave of people. We know we should, you know, if everybody would say, yeah, if we could all get together and say, we'd, we'd buy this house, fix it up. You'd, I mean, but that's, isn't that reality? Uh, wonderful. Uh, they, they enjoyed it here. They really did. Not like today, like over here. The old timers would come in a yard here. My father would cut their hair. Maybe six, seven guys, and I'd sit on a bench, waiting their turn to be, have their hair cut. Man, they talk like till six o'clock at night. That was good. My father would cut their hair. Maybe they'd give them a little schnapps, or they'd bring their own schnapps, and wonderful.
It was good. But it died out. Why did it die out? I don't know. I don't know. It shouldn't have, but it did. I don't know. It would have been nice if it had been, you know, like it was years ago. What could have been done to keep it going? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. There's nothing wrong with East Toledo and for Toledo that jobs couldn't cure. All of East Toledo has been, been working people out of life and they're hard workers. And, and by God, if they want a good day's work, I think East Toledo's worth that. I really feel that if you don't get people from the neighborhood to jobs, then you might as well give up the fight to save the neighborhood. There's a chance for great industry in here. And, and I think we were instrumental in, in waking up downtown to realize that they've got to come back to the east side. They've got to get an industry in here. The Ironville neighborhood community of Ironville used to be right here, where Gulf Oil also used to be. And it's a major part of our industrial planning is to take advantage of what we have without having to expand that slash and burn style of industrial and community redevelopment. Look, you ain't gonna stop progress, okay? They're gonna, the courts will come out, hey, you've got to move, get out. It's ours now. No, it's not that way. All no. right. It's not that way. Well, in other first words, of all, first of all, half the money coming into the neighborhood for crying out loud is government money, and Uncle Sam says you can't do nothing unless you get the people together and let them tell you what they want or what they don't want. And that's just the way it goes. I don't care what you say. It's coming. It's going to be bulldozed down. Get out. Beat it. We can't forget Pole Town. There's a master plan on it. Yeah, you look up at Detroit. You have that factory still not built where they throw down that church in that neighborhood. I wouldn't be surprised if there's not a plan either on, in somebody's file draw or definitely in people's minds that since we're so close to the port, since, half, since Iron, Ironville was already cleared away, there's just a little bit between here and the expressway. What other site in Toledo for a nice continued industrial area? I think that there are ways that one can accommodate industrial development and residential development uh, and to do it very carefully so that you don't threaten a neighborhood. One of the problems with Pole Town in Detroit was that the decision was made downtown and no one in the neighborhood was organized for anything. Uh, I don't think that's the situation in Birmingham at all. And the neighborhood is a lot of bars have disappeared, and uh, we've always wanted to have a bar, so we thought we'd try to do our best towards getting one and carry on, you know, with our friends. You said money is a factor. Well, it's best meant for the family. See, I, I'm married, I have two kids, and it's a long run the best meant. For myself, John is single, and you know. I met my husband ten years ago in this bar. This bar right here, we met each other. We was me and this Cindy. We were sitting here one night, and my husband came in here. And we met. We bought a house six years ago, Kitty Corner, from here. And you know, in June, you know, we bought the bar. And it's, it's like a, a like a soap opera, really. A romance all come together. You meet in one place, you buy a house, and you know, six years later, you buy a bar, Kitty Corner, from the house that you grew up in. You know, we used to come in here all the time. We were gonna yeah. buy the bar, and we were George. going to uh, George George's Flower Bar. We we're gonna buy that Sakaris, and uh, it just never worked out. Where does a kid come up with money like? That? Oh, now this was 15 years ago. You know, we're in our early 20s, and we just wanted a place to hang out and have uh, softball teams and fish fries and. Yeah, so, so if the opportunity was there, would you do it now? Yeah. If we can get enough guys to well, go. Here, let me pour you another drink, cause I mean, dude, you'll buy monikies <laughs> right now. That's... Uh, no, wait a minute. No, we didn't buy anything. We didn't buy anything. We didn't do anything. We really made up. We gooped up with monks, I think. Monks, really monks is a mistake money. the rest of our life will pay for, I think. I think so, too. 
you know, talking about coming back and, you know, well, coming back and having a few beers in a bar, you know, is that allegiance to a neighborhood? What is it really? I'm, you know, what is Birmingham? Is Birmingham not in a state of transition like everything else? Does it always have to be a Hungarian neighborhood? And as Bill was saying, there's people, there's new families starting out. It's a new neighborhood. There's new people coming on. So what is what is Birmingham? And ten years down the road, you know, what is going to what's going to be the situation then? If, if there's new people coming in, and the churches don't make it, or if they do make it, and then you get the situation in, in Ironville, what what would happen if they would bulldoze a Birmingham neighborhood? What would really be the effect at that time? We'd probably just come and sit in a car and drink, like on a corner, <laughs> like it was uh, months or something. Or something. Uh, we, uh, no matter what happens, we're all gonna, we're going to come back as long as the place is open, and we can all meet together. We'll be back. But as far as it surviving, I don't know. It's, I don't know. How many generations have been involved in the business? One, two, three. <laughs> the butcher shop, the bakery, the hardware store, one of the uh, bars in the neighborhood, all of them have had a generational change. Younger people, all from the community, have taken those, those stores and those businesses over and now trying to make them go as part of the community. I've been in business for the last two years in the neighborhood and I know all the people in the neighborhood from being here all my life and I, we always liked the business and the quality of the meats and it's established and I thought we'd make a goal of it. My business is only going to be as good as I make it. We've been open for about two weeks now and we do all sorts of arrangements for all occasions. The whole neighborhood outlook is just looking better to me I think. I don't see anything negative. I see houses being painted. I see guys going back to work. I see kids growing up and getting into school. If you go up and down the street, you'll find that it's people that's lived here forever, will never move out. So I think the neighborhood's going strong. Leave the bone in, I like the bone. Very good. That's what's unique about Birmingham from its very, very beginnings. It was a neighborhood that had a lot of ma and pa stores, and they survived because the people not only uh, worked there, but they lived there, and they had a real interest in the neighborhood, and they wanted it to survive. This building is going to be a showcase that proves that you don't have to tear down Birmingham in order to build a new community. So you can build on the old. I think fixing this building is a good example of what what Birmingham can be. 
about it. That is, the old and the new together. You don't have to tear it down and build a new fire station. You can do both. You can build a new fire station and take what you have and build on that. And I think this is the start to try to help rehab the neighborhood. The first thing we did is plant flowers in the front of the building to let people know the place is still alive. A lot of the young people are now moving back in where their parents 20 years ago or in the 70s, 60s moved out. We offer financial incentives in the form of, of $500 grants to young couples who come to Birmingham to buy their first home and make a commitment to live here for at least five years. This brochure, I mean, he, there's a very positive thing that was done to promote the neighborhood. I think the fact that the realtors were insensitive to the type of neighborhood it was, and uh, they were very uh, biased in the way they presented property in the neighborhood. And I think you're starting to turn that around with this brochure. Younger people have, you know, we want to get out and get a nice home in a nice area. But yet we don't want to leave, yet we don't want to leave this neighborhood because there's something here. You can go any place in the world here around Toledo or anything. But when you move out of Bourbon Camp, you move down a family. the embroidery showing in the neighborhood it, with the vests with the mothers making them for their sons for their husbands they have the shirts with the Hungarian crest with the flowers on them it's a beautiful custom and I think it's it's a revival of a lost art it's the harvest dance the Sudeti Ba that we have every September and we're starting it off with a uh, parade second year we're doing it now. Um, it used to be held every year back I think up till the late 60s or so and then it died out and we bought the, that back last year. I think a lot of third generation Americans are realizing and appreciating the importance of their roots and I think they want to know more about it and I think Birmingham represents an enclave of something that's very special and represents an alternative to the plastic suburban experience. What we're trying to do is to teach, inform, preserve, I think cuisine, I think the folk dances, I think a number of mm -hmm. Judy's activities and trying to preserve the language, I think the embroidery classes, I think the classes in dyeing the Easter eggs, I think, I think the Bethlehemish play is still popular and it still continues and it's there because the people want it to be there. Why do I come back here? Yeah, why do you come back here? Because me, it's the greatest neighborhood ever was, it was ever any place in the world. Why? I was in a service, I understand neighborhoods, I, this is the best. What are the things you come back here for? Companionship, love, I wish to see, I like to see this neighborhood, my old neighborhood, I left 40 years ago, I love to see this neighborhood grow like it should grow. They keep coming back because I think there isn't enough for them out there, that they're still looking for a cultural context, something to hold on to. Birmingham community is a, is a spiritual association, I would say. There are spiritual values attached to that. And anybody who was exposed to that, and anybody had the courage to buy into it, is going to be affected by it.
celebration of life, celebration of a lifestyle. We are very proud of it, and uh, we open our streets and our hearts to everybody, and we welcome everybody and want to show them how we live, how we enjoy life. Life is beautiful, and we want to give them a little taste of it. So that's the purpose of the festival. If there are happenings, if there are events, then you open your doors and you let other people come in too, and let them buy into it, then uh, that's a sign of vitality. And why are we doing what we're doing? <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm the one who, who most often talks about, about quitting and, and this is enough, uh, because it, it gets harder and harder. But I guess down inside I realize it is important. And uh, we just try to carry on and hopefully after we leave and there'll be others here in the neighborhood. Why lose your nationality? Hey, I'm proud of my nationality. I'll speak at any place. I got green. When they don't like it, I say, I'm sorry. I got green. You don't have to listen. I'm I not talking green. about you. Hey. Why do you raise your kids uh, as uh, Hungarian Americans? Oh, well, for us, for me, for, for them, I would never think of, of not raising them Hungarian, and, you know, um, it's, it's our roots, and I would never consider not doing that. Can I still see a lot of nice housing here 30 years from now that's going to be the pick of people because they're going to want to live close to where the action's happening downtown. Those who work here may want to live closer. Um, we're right at the center where people are going to be very interested in this not only the housing here, but the property. And I think it's just a question of time. I think the pendulum is going to reverse itself and, and we're going to be right in the middle of it. We can. Good morning, everyone. We are here to celebrate the reopening of this yard. I'm here this morning to commend a cooperative effort that this represents not only between the Port Authority uh, and Henry Merce and the trade unions, but also the important role that the East Toledo Community Organization, ETCO, has played in anchoring the community and trying to develop plans for this side of the riverfront in the greater Toledo area in the years to come. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord, our God. We thank you for the rivers, the lakes, and the seas, especially in our Great Lakes area, and pray for all the men who sail upon them and our builders of their ships. Bless this rejuvenated shipbuilding facility and all the workmen who bring this place, a job for all. A little secret we share with our Slovak, our Polish, our ethnic brethren from all parts of the world may be found in the case of Hungarians in the national anthem that we've sung now for 11 years in a row here. I wonder how many know the words translated of that anthem. I'd like to share those today and you'll see what the secret is. God bless the Magyar nation with a good spirit, with prosperity. Stretch above her your protective arms when she struggles against adversaries. It is misfortune that for long has torn her. Now bring upon her happy years. These people have already atoned for the past and for the future. Our faith in God in large part is what keeps us going. We ask the Lord to continue blessing our peoples, our brothers and sisters of other ethnic groups, our neighborhood, our city, our future. <laughs>